episode starts this week with the ending of Trigger Happy Havoc of this, when uh, six survivors open the door and they actually we see their reaction of when the door is open. We see that the Future Foundation, as in Mutakata and everyone, they were actually uh, watching the entire game as was told before in the game, I think. Just a bunch of stuff I think we already figured out and knew. Oh, and uh, Cheese is there. That's it's nice to know. I don't know to like or hate Chisa now. I mean, she did nothing wrong, but I mean... Anyways, we go back to present time and we're back with Murakata, Makoto, Asahina, and Ryota. And let's not forget those two extra survivors that we don't know of yet. I mean, they're not in the room, but you know. So Asahina showed us the notebook that apparently has a killer in it. And Makoto reads it and we find out that everyone killed themselves. There was no attacker. Everyone suicided. Wait. At one point, Makoto mentioned monitors, and after that, Ryota had a little weird reaction. What I'm guessing is they killed themselves because of the hypnosis video that was created when, you know, back in Despair Arc. I'm guessing that's coming back to play now in Future Arc. And the people who saw the videos killed themselves because they were hypnotized to do it. If I'm right, I'm right. Yes. Naegi mentioned that every time a person died, there was a monitor nearby. Small detail I never noticed. I did notice that, that the monitors were always on, but I never really, you know, had any thought about it. Later, Naegi ties himself up, or has the others tie himself up in the middle of a hall. He does this so when the time limit comes and everyone falls asleep, he wants to look at, I'm guessing he wants to look at the video to see if, you know, he'll try to kill himself. Before I get any further, I just want to ask the question, how does the attacker, if everyone falls asleep, because I just saw Nagi fall asleep, if everyone falls asleep, how does the person wake up to kill themselves? Or even see the video to kill themselves? There would have to be something with the wristband to wake them up, or they have to get someone to wake them up. Oh, there's an alarm. So, Nagi wakes up and looks up at the monitor and who's there to meet him? Monokuma, giving him a little greeting. Even though it's just a recording. Eventually, the video, I guess the hypnotist video did start playing. Which was a Monokuma theater at first? And the song that was playing was Monokuma's theme played in reverse. So, Nagi wakes up inside some weird version of his mind? A hallucination, I'm guessing? There, we see Kyoko, but he turns around and we see Sayaka? Aren't we supposed to like not care about your existence anymore? He turns around to Kyoko, and next to Kyoko, out of nowhere, Hifumi, Celeste, and Taka appear from out of the ground? What? Then next to Sayaka, uh, out of the ground came Leon, Sakura, Mondo, and Chihiro. I'm guessing everyone from Trigger Happy Havoc that died is now popping out of nowhere. Inside this weird version of Nagi's head. Oh man, then they started showing everyone. Oh man. So after that. They started showing everyone's bodies, well, their bodies standing up, the way they looked, the way their bodies looked when their bodies were, you know, dead. So, like, Yoko has a poison eye, Celeste was actually hilariously on fire, Leon had, like, a bunch of bruises and bumps all over his face, Chihiro was hanged, and to, to be really funny, Mondo was butter. <laughs> okay, that's funny actually. So Nagi wakes up in the real world, I'm guessing he's awakened or maybe he's still psychologically screwed up in the head from the video. But anyways, he wakes up and he's freaking out. I'm guessing this is the point in the video where someone would try to kill themselves? Yeah, because a knife just popped out of nowhere from, I don't know, the darkness of the ceiling. Nagi looks at the knife, he grabs the knife. Nagi opens his eyes after a little vision of Kyoko's 
and he says he's coming too and he was only a split second away from actually stabbing himself when he opened his eyes he had those weird crazy eyes that everyone from despair arc had when they went turned into despair those weird swirly eyes but it, except Nagi's was glowing but right before he almost stabbed himself someone slapped the knife out of his hand guess who guess who guess who it's Sakakura who's not dead all right so that's our fifth person that's not dead who's our sixth person but yeah he slaps Makoto out of it saying that you know he survived and you know he's hope so don't go killing yourself you big dummy okay so Sakakura is he's a boss not only did he get not only did he get pierced by a giant spear he got cut through the stomach with a blazing sword and to get his wristband off he chopped off his hand yes he chopped off his hand ow that's why he's even here because he didn't go to sleep because the wristband is off because he chopped his hand off oh wait I made a mistake before the knives come out of a TV I saw it when uh, I saw it when uh, great Gozu was going on a rampage and killing himself right there Nike made a good idea that they just they should destroy all the monitors in the building except the fact that there's like you know a bajillion monitors in the building so it'll take them forever to do that we learned that Sakakura actually wanted or did hate Nike well probably still does because you know ever since Nike made it out of Hope Academy or at least the building that once was Hope Academy Sakakura really hated him because Nagi defeated Junko and Ashima, which I'm highly guessing that Sakakura wanted to do. We go back to Murakata, Ryota, and Nasahina. Makoto's there too, and we find out that apparently Tangen is the person is that person behind all this all the ki not all the killing, but this killing game. He's the mastermind here. Murakata even said that he's a remnant of despair. I'm not really getting it. Let's see. So soon, Ryota starts freaking out. Well, not freaking out, but he bends down the floor, taking a wild guess at reactions because you know, basically, it's all his fault. Not his, it's his fault, not his fault. It's his fault because he made the videos and didn't and know anything about Junko and Ashima at the time, so he did nothing wrong. It's not his fault because you know Junko kind of learned how to do the videos and. It's because of Ryota, and you know, she starts spreading it and using it to mind control people, and you know, so on and so forth. So, I'm guessing he's feeling really guilty because you know, we go to Sakakura and he goes back into the Monokuma door, which is a fake exit. Apparently, there's a room off to I'm guessing that's the right, and it's, a, it's like a generator room. Is that a power room? Sakakura pulls one of the levers which makes the lights turn off where Nagi and the others are, making the emergency lights turn on. I don't get what he's trying to do. Oh, I see. He turned off the power so that all the monitors would turn off. You see, if we knew that from the beginning, if we knew that from the beginning, it would have been much simpler. Well, if we knew about the Monokuma door. So, Sakakura is literally getting his body well not getting his body but getting his blood everywhere he's bleeding a lot he only has one more lever to pull and Murakata is on his way to run for his best pal best buddy right hand man you know and thanks to Murakata I mean not Murakata Sakakura pulling the final lever it made all the wristbands fall off I'm guessing that's the call Murakata finally gets to where Sakakura is and sees that Sakakura is dead M maybe I think this time he may be actually dead then Murakata gets on his knees and cries at the side of his dead best friend you know I think this is the after credit scene even though that entire sequence with the dead Sakakura and all that was happening during the credits but anyways we're outside the future foundation building or the rubble of it and we see there are future foundation members I'm guessing trying to get inside the rubble of the building but anyways we go back to Makoto and I'm guessing he's accusing or guessing about uh, Mitarai I'm guessing Nagi knows that he's the ultimate animator super high school level animator 
So I'm guessing he's getting all the clues about the brainwashing videos and, you know, putting the puzzle together and connecting it to Mirai. So Nagi asks Ryota if he knows anything about, you know, the brainwashing videos, seeing that he's super high school level animator and all. So Ryota starts yelling, saying that he didn't do it, and it was all Enoshima Junko's fault. She just stole his techniques. And then Ryota's cell phone starts ringing, and on it it says he's received that Ryota has received a message from Tangen. 